Early morning day three and I um, stumbled across this as we're walking in early. You can see the sun's just coming up and I've been following this thing on Facebook for a while. Good build. Very nice little car. Cornfield Customs. Just to give you a bit of an idea how big this place is, we're heading over to the West Hall, so it's separate. Walkway down there, the escalators. And then as you can see, we're on top of the roadway, and all the other halls are over there. The place is absolutely gigantic. So we're in early day three, we we'll come over to the West Hall, check out some of the stuff over here. So we found some Ford motors. And the Mega Zilla. 615 horsepower. Already. This um, hall's mainly off-road. I think there's some camping and stuff down the back, so we're not going to get too far into here, probably because that's not what we're here for, but I just thought I'd come over to give you a bit of an idea just how big this place is. So all sorts of accessories. This is more up Fuzzy's alley, mate, eh? Hey? Fuzzy's got a Ranger. Yeah, it won't be pimped up like this one, but I don't yeah. think. Still not high enough. Yeah. Stuff in here I've never even heard of. As you can see, there is just rows and rows of car companies, wheels, polishers. Jack them up, lift them down, turn them around. Any, any accessory you need, this is a spot, I reckon. So it's not open yet, we're in a bit early. They're all getting set up, so another half an hour the crowd will be in. Well, don't tell me it's yes. <laughs> 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 oh, found something over here, Fuzz. <laughs> nice little Mustang on a the stand there. Oh, 
probably become one of the biggest things in our industry in the last few years and these guys here are in the process of doing a bit. You want to end up mate? <laughs> well here's a nice one we found, check that out Fuzzy, how nice is that? Nice and straight, very clean, very clean. It's definitely a look this year, isn't it, with the, uh, I don't know, the squareness of the edges and the panels on the car. That seems yeah. to be a style that has been picked up, I think, across the board with all the big builders. I mean, all the body lines are over accentuated to what they would have been factory. I mean, you see the first one and you think, that's really cool, but then once you've seen a few more of them, it's like, oh, no, no. Sorry about the vacuum noise there, Lois. I've just grabbed hold of Jonah with uh, the 3M stand here with some of these cool cars. He's just going to explain a little bit about some of the wraps that they're using on these cars. So, mate, thanks for your time and um, yes. jump straight into it. Yeah, of course. So right, what we got here is Brad DeBerti's C10 Slayer. Um, it's actually a well-followed vehicle. And this car has been wrapped for three years with our dead matte black wrap film. It's our color change film. We have roughly around 100 colors that you can choose from that you can wrap you know really anything and everything on the vehicle this here like I said is a dead matte black gives it that nice finish um, knocks down all the, the light um, we also have gloss finishes this year we actually also launched a high gloss film where it looks like it's just direct paint so we're kind of looking at the interior here as you can see this is a full custom build I wish Brad DeBerti was here actually so he could walk you through it I believe it was him and his dad that built this out years back so that'll be wrap on the... Yeah, I mean, we've got all, you know, everything's custom in here from the outside, inside. So that glove box was wrapped though as well? Yeah, I believe that was. What do you think about it? It's pretty cool. It's one of a kind. So the Lambo, that's wrapped? That, it, so it will be getting wrapped. That's gonna be getting wrapped here by one of our authorized trainers. The tallest wrapper alive is what he goes by. That's gonna be getting our high gloss, our new high gloss finish 2080 film. So what we're looking at now is actual carbon fiber, is it? It is, yeah. So that is straight carbon fiber. This is actually uh, a car that's used out on the race fields. So when are you going to wrap that? So that'll be coming up here shortly. Oh, I can really? actually, yeah. Matt. Sorry. When are we going to be wrapping this car? When? Yeah. Oh, right now. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, within the next few minutes, we're going to end up finishing this uh, by the end of Friday. And you're actually going to see it on the uh, track afterwards. Pretty sweet. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So this is the new part of the convention center. We're just about to hop in a Tesla and go through a tunnel and go to the other side where the rest of the, the show is.
side. And we come from way over there. How easy is that? Unbelievable. Why did we walk over the first time, Fuzz? Well, because we didn't know. <laughs> It's a super clean engine bay because half the engine's in the back down here. Change the door now. Something else. Chuck a couple of turbos in there as well with the intercoolers and there's some big treads. to say hello to the guys at Merca. People that follow my channel would know that um, Merca is distributed by PPG in Australia, so I use a lot of this product. Highly recommend it. I'm just less fuzzy talking to a couple of guys. So how are we going? Going great, yeah. So it's funny, when you get to SEMA, there's like so many people here. These guys are from Canada, um, from the Merca side of things. And we normally deal obviously through Australia and America. But um, how's the show been for you guys? The show's been awesome. Yeah, it's been a good turnout. It's um, amazing how big it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. It's this, is, this is my first time, I don't know, Daniel. Second time. Second time. First time here, like, it's shocking how, how large it is. Yeah, and I mean, we, we've sort of been looking around and all of a sudden you go another hall and it's like full of wheels and then there's another hall full of outdoor and it's just so much to see. And, oh, yeah. and really, I don't know that you can see it in four days. Yeah, no, it's true. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll have a bit of a yarn and um, thanks for giving us a bit of time. Hey, no, no worries, our pleasure. Thanks very much.
just seen Daniel here doing an interview with someone, so I've jumped in and grabbed a little bit of his time, and he's been pleasant enough to do that for us. Mate, this is sensational. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. I'm going to grab the camera. If you want to just give us yeah. a gift, let me sort of work through it yeah. and tell us a bit about the box. Okay. Uh, be All right. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel from Daniel's Creations and uh, this is actually my first true complete bike build. I usually build cars, but uh, on this bike here, I started off with a 2000 uh, soft Heritage Softail and uh, boy, there's so much done on this bike. Uh, for instance, like this headlight, it's off a 39 BMW. If you take a look at the uh, speedometer, you can see how it goes the opposite way. And uh, like the paint job on it, it was myself and uh, three or four other guys, Coast One, uh, Mike Lamberson with the painting, and uh, like the murals here, that was Corey Sinclair. These murals actually have uh, Lumilar underneath, which light up. Oh, okay. They turn off and on, yeah. I have the battery disconnected, otherwise I'd turn them on for you. But every single mural throughout the bike, it turns on. And if you're driving it at night, you'll see those light up really nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can look it up online, it's called Lumilar. And I also have a uh, Trask Turbo here that we had it all engraved and uh, plated is as well. Hand engraved that or is it that, it's all hand engraved. Hand yeah, engraved. yeah. All, everything, the whole bike's all hand engraved. And you can see the heads, the heads here, we had them, uh, I had them diamond cut, we had them uh, pineapple cut. The pineapple cutting was done in Oklahoma from a guy that's called uh, Pineapple Express. You can find them online as well. And we had all the exhaust all custom built. We had the uh, entire engine removed. I had the engine completely assembled, disassembled, and we had it uh, completely engraved from the bottom up. If you look at the mirror, if you look at the mirror, you can see underneath the motor, it's completely engraved. The whole motor and transmission. Must be an unbelievable amount of hours. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of hours here. And like, like for instance, the seat. The seat was done right here in Anaheim, California, by the seat guy. He handmade that just to custom fit my bike, painted it. It's beautiful, beautiful seat. And I have airbags on it by uh, Shotgun Airbags out in LA. And the bags here, we, I custom made the bags from scratch. Uh, the lids here, they open up the opposite way and I have some mirrors there as well. I kind of got some ideas off a, a car, as you can see, like the tail lights off a of Cadillac and some of the ports here and the fins, the sergeant stripes off a of 58 Impala. And I, I actually took a piece of a 62 Impala skirt and I made this lip here. You know how the lips on the yeah. Impala skirts come out? That's how, that's how I, yeah. Yeah. I, I build cars out in Australia and I like to mm. take bits and pieces off one thing and put it yeah, that, else. Yeah, that was a, a two-piece tank. I, I molded it into a uh, one-piece tank and stretched it a little. I did uh, fenders as well, stretched them out as well. Front and back. They got, I think the back's like a nine, nine inch and the front's like a seven inch stretch on it. There's so many things to see. If, you're, if your camera lights up, you can see inside of the fender. You can see the murals in, that I have inside of the fender back there. It has all inside to the fender. And if you look underneath, which you can't right now, but underneath the whole bike, I got patterns and murals all underneath the back fender, the bags. I didn't miss a spot on the bike to cover. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. For sure, thank you, appreciate it. Well, it's a big shout out to Lovells. Who would ever thought we'd be here in the US filming SEMA? Without their support, I'm sure we wouldn't be able to do it. Don't forget, if you need upgrade for your four wheel drive or suspension for your, your cruiser or your, your street car, check them out, lovellsauto.com.au.
a little bit on it and a few people already, already asked me to come back here. So I've actually caught up with Rich. How you going, buddy? Good morning, good morning. Mate, beautiful car. Thank you. And it's come out of um, Legacy Classic Cars. And what we're going to do, as we've been doing, I'm going to grab the camera off the fuzz now and we're going to have a walk around. He's going to explain to us what they've been doing to the car. Awesome. So we always seem to start on the engine, Rich, but um, we're, we're pretty happy to see a Cleveland in there. But it is definitely a 351 Cleveland. It's actually the original motor to the car. Really? Um, the motor was, the car was damaged. A tree fell on it and it was hit on the side. So it had lived a rough life. So we didn't feel too bad of doing a lot of custom modifications to it. But it's the original motor and the original uh, transmission as well. So it's the AOD transmission. The motor's been bored 60 over. Um, it's got trick flow heads and actually EFI hardware kit from Australia for the fuel injection. There you go. I like what you've done with the orange and, and the LEDs and it looks really good. Thank you. It's a CVF. There's their bland, brand new black diamond uh, pulley system, Sanders headers, and then chassis works, front suspension, and Ridetech airbags. The goal of the car was to stay as true to a Mustang as we can with bringing it in kind of into the modern air. So the grill is actually a one-off 3D billet aluminum piece, custom made. And then our fabricators made that whole front spoiler, so it's one piece metal. So we have a lot of sheet metal because we're old sheet metal guys, but a lot of carbon fiber too. And obviously it's sitting on some bags or something. Cause it's on airbags, ride tech airbags. So it's got three positions, it's got show height, ride height, and then load height so we can get her in the trailer. It's shot wheels, it's their concave D, new rims, so it's hidden lug nuts, so that whole front comes off so you can't see the lug nuts. So you just span a wrench and get that cap off and then the lug nuts are behind there. Big brake from Wheel Woods. Carbon fiber. That actually came off a Lamborghini. <laughs> We got the idea, one of our neighbors took off his side skirts on a speed bump, and then we fixed it for him. We had the other one, was like, well, let's see what we can do with this, and then, the, yeah, and it fit. We got rid of the windshield wipers, the cow grill, the mirrors, the drip rails, the door handles. We actually took out the whole dash on the inside of the car and made a dash out of metal. So that whole dash is one piece metal. So what are you doing for wipers? Like no wipers at all. So no in Texas, I, I hear that your inspection process we is very strenuous. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to have them, but if it's a show car like this, they just give us a thing and say, it, have fun. Right next. We, we don't really drive in the rain anyway. Yeah, so that whole dash is one piece metal. Those are Porsche Cayman AC vents, and then a double den Pioneer radio system, resto mod, AC controls. Uh, it's probably the only one in the world, inner carbon fiber door panels and rear trim panels. We actually had those made for us out of a mold that they took from our original door panels in California. Nice. Uh, flush mounted glass, so no trim. And where this usually has a trim piece that holds the window on, we actually built this up so it mounts against the body instead of against the chrome trim. Got rid of the drip gutters? Yeah, drip gutters are gone. A bit, a bit like if you don't have wipers, you don't need drip gutters. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It won't be in the rain very much. It doesn't rain a lot in Texas, but. And we call it the Mach 10, so we went to go see the Top Gun Maverick movie, and it's a Mach 1 car. And then when he was trying to get Mach 10, we're like, that's the name of the car. Yeah, it's easy. So John Van Dyke, our fabricators, made that roll pan, and then we had the fins cut off of a water jet. They're made out of aluminum, so a lot of metal in the car. And then he tucked the license plate very far underneath the car. That's some beautiful lines. Thank you. And I really didn't realize how well you can see the lines until you take the mirrors off. When you take the mirrors off, then you can really see how the, the flow of the car goes from back to front. The mirror cuts it off right in the middle of the side mirrors. Just like the way you've kept the roundness. I'm seeing a lot of cars really squared off at the moment. Yeah, 100% factory, but then we got rid of the seam. So there's a yeah. seam that goes here and another seam here. So we got rid of those seams as well. Still has a factory clock, although it's a Dakota digital clock now. And then changed some of the emblems to a Mach 10 to keep the theme. 
That is a very cool car. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, we look at it. Uh, it's got a lot of subtle touches. There's about 2,000, well, not about, there's exactly 2,020 uh, meth fabrication hours of just metal fabrication alone. Yeah. Metal fabrication alone. So you'd be what, 4,000 all up? At least 4,000. And we built the car in six months. So the owner said, hey, I wanted to get it to SEMA. What's it going to take to get in there in six months? And I was like, well, we'll have to shut down the shop and only work on your car. And he said, okay, let's do it. And here it is. So. You haven't had much sleep either. Not a lot. Our wives are a little mad, but we're, we're, we're here. We're super happy to be here. Rich, thank you very much for the walk around, mate. We're oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you all. Sunshine. Some people in here. That's why he was here. He had a We found this side door and come out in the, in the Toyo Tyres area, which we didn't even know existed. And you wouldn't believe it, we found this beautiful car. We just told to John Howe, he's telling me he's bloody from New Zealand. So, you just never know what you find. Mate, beautiful out here in the weather. Ah, uh, nice day, but I tell you right now, you don't want to be here early in the morning or later in the evening. It's cold. Oh, oh, it's man. cold as well, is it? Well, we're out of the drags on Saturday, Sunday, and it was freezing. Freezing, yeah. Mate, beautiful car. Thank what you. I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the camera, get you to explain a bit about the, what the boys have done. Sure. And um, how it all come about, and we'll work through it. Perfect. Okay, it's a 1967 uh, Chevelle. No, that's wrong. Galaxy. Can we start that again or not? We'll chop it out. We'll chop it out. 1967 Galaxy. Uh, the engine's a 427 small block Ford. Eight throttle body injected, built by Smitting. Makes a little over 600 horsepower. Uh, made it to obviously a transmission suitable for a Ford and that has its own um, computer control so you can reprogram the shifts and do whatever you want to do. Uh, the whole firewall and floor all the way through to the trunk including the floor of the trunk was removed so we needed to uh, section the the, the, the body down over the, uh, the um, Art Morrison chassis. So yeah, Sean did uh, all the sheet metal work. Um, one of the trick things with the hood is, if you notice, our bonnet hinges are kind of unique. And being from Australia, you'd like the fact they were modelled off a Commodore, a late model Commodore of that. But we didn't want to have big bulky hinges interfering with uh, what we were going to do with the panel work. So that's kind of unique. Front bumper, that's been narrowed up, uh, cut and chucked and recessed back into the fenders. Same as the rear, we've done the same on the back. Um, all the stainless has been painted. 
All this has been particularly special coated. So left hand drive, so are you that what? anything anything twenty years old in New Zealand you're allowed to leave left hand drive. Okay. Um, and then on the rear on a, a galaxy the the tail lights bolt on. Yep. So we epoxied and bolted them on. Uh, and obviously this is all stainless. Uh, these are LEDs. Ironically we found the LED lights for these out of out of the UK. Why out of the UK? I don't know. I don't know. That's just where they came from. So we're very fortunate that Toyo Tires wanted the car on their stand, so we're very pleased to have Toyo Tires on the car. Yep. Same again, you know, Sean's suspension wise, is it on call over rear on a nine inch and four link? Yep. So is it on bags or is No, it's on springs. Nice. We do have to raise it up a little bit. So the reason we shipped the car to the States was to get the trim done. Um, I've had three cars already done by Gabe's Custom Interiors in San Bernardino. So we had a rendering done of this and uh, the owner of the car was very pleased with it. And um, Gabe's have done a phenomenal job. We're very pleased with the trim. So yeah, it's got it's got touch screen in the middle there when you power it up, or you can slide down a little cover so it hides it all. So you hop in, power it up. Uh, the three three centre buttons are for the AC, and then you just touch the screen. You can turn the lights on, windows up, windows down. Is that um, seat belt a standard feature, or that's just been modified as well? No, these are the seats come with lap and diagonal seat belts in them. Yep. So you don't see you don't see too many 67 galaxies. So over here, uh, this is a gentleman that built it and a gentleman that painted it. Very shy again. <laughs> they didn't want to come on camera, but that's all right. No, that's all good. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We'll get that up on the channel and uh, we'll be able to check it out. So on this stand yesterday, I had a totally different car on it. So. Even you think you've done all the shams, you just never know what you're going to find because they've switched the cars around. It's getting harder and harder all the time to get um, close to these cars, I can tell you. But we'll just keep plugging away. I must admit I'm running out of um, words to use to describe these cars because they just continually impress variations to style and class and character. Well, there's something a bit different. I'm not going to try and get too carried away, but it's um, obviously a diesel. Whipple charger and very big inlets there, Fuzz. Oh, yes. Nice set of pipes there, handmade. And the exhaust to match. All the Motec controls. Hydraulic handbrake. Get the mechanism for the yeah, operate fair, the right. bed. There's a fair uh, bit of engineering there. So it almost looks like a bulk in, drop in job. Lock jaw.
Right, okay, so we've caught a cup, found a couple of Aussies here. So I've known about Irish tradition for a long, long time. And a mate of mine, Simon Craig, is a big pumper for you guys. Hey, he's he's sure right is. on it. Yes, I'll so, yep. so, mate, good to see you here. Um, how's it going? It's, it's been really been really good. Um, it's, uh, as, you know, as I've got to probably mention to you before, the approach to an event like this is a little bit different to like a, a, a summon apps or a motor X or something like that back in Australia, where for most for most people they kind of know who we are and what we do. So, you know, it seems as massive as, as everyone well knows. We've only been here a couple of years now, but we rock up here with a bit more of a direct intention. You know, we're going to let people know who we are, increase a bit of awareness and just so let you're them know looking, why we're different. So you're looking for dealers and stuff or direct sales? Look, look both, really. Um, but the priority at the moment, because it is still relatively fresh for us to be here, is just increasing Because we've got a lot of Americans watching and Canadians sure and Absolutely. stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. on the channel. So Hit us up, give us a call. Yep. Um, but really, you know, it's just, like I said, letting people know why we differ to a couple other brands that, you know, well-known ones that, that go around, why we do what we do and why, why it's better. So we're going to run out of battery shortly, so I'm going to get this in, but really good Aussie product. I'm going to grab a bit of footage in a minute. If you're in America, get on to the boys. If you're in Australia, you probably know where to find them. And we'll just have a quick look around. Obviously got plenty of dizzies, um, modules and stuff. Do you want to give us a quick Absolutely. rundown? I've got three left, so we're going easy. Yeah, all good. I mean, really, the, lo the long and short of it is, you can see at the moment, all of our distributors, we do everything in-house in Victoria, in Australia. Um, yeah, three-wire Hall effect sensors. This is purely for triggering. There's no physical advanced mechanisms under the cap. They trigger the control boxes. We've got a massive range of those with curves, rev limiters, anything you kind of need from a basic carburetor application out to EFI with sequential injection. So you pretty much everything, coils, race. plug wires, everything you need, all done in house with a three year warranty. Awesome. Mate, appreciate your time. Absolutely, thank you. And um, we'll keep moving on, go up to the media centre and find some more batteries and keep doing it. Thanks again.